So it's my pleasure now to introduce to you Santo D'Agostino. You saw his picture earlier um, when we had our opening plenary. And Santo is an assistant professor in the Department of Physics. He teaches our large first year anatomy courses, uh, one section that's online, and he teaches methods of physics and other light subjects such as the theory of relativity. Um, but Santo is a, a, an adopter and great supporter of open educational resources, and he's going to share with us WebWorks, which is an online free um, database of questions for students. So please join me in welcoming Santo. Thank you very much, Jill, for the introduction. And uh, I found this morning really inspiring, so thank you very much to the organizers uh, who organized this. And um, thank you to Julia for inviting me as well to participate, uh, especially, especially timely, right? Because uh, now's the time when we're just getting ready for second semester, so we've got lots of ideas to go back and, uh, and use. Um, so the physics department at Brock has a long history of uh, uh, using open uh, access resources. Uh, I joined the physics department uh, almost five years ago, so a lot of the stuff predates me. For example, in our labs, uh, we use open source software for collecting, analyzing, and displaying uh, data. Uh, starting in second year, all of our students learn LaTeX, which is the state-of-the-art uh, typesetting program. Uh, to, you know, so they, they submit all their lab reports typeset with LaTeX. Um, so they, they use that throughout second, third, and fourth year. So LaTeX is open source, and, it, and it's the state-of-the-art uh, program that's used by mathematicians and physicists around the world to, um, to typeset their research papers that get published in journals. Um, another example is, um, uh, the Open University in Britain and uh, University of Reading and University of Southampton collaborated to produce uh, first year physics resources and math resources. And uh, thanks to the work of Ed Sternen, uh, he, he did a lot of programming work to post this at the physics department website. And so if we have struggling students who are struggling with say, say basic math, which we have many of in first year, uh, you know, we put links in our courses to specific sections of these materials that are posted on our own website, uh, and, and they're, they're open to the world, anyone can use them, but we can use them in our own teaching, and so we can point students to specific places where they can get tutorial help uh, if, they, if they need it. So, so there's lots of examples in the past uh, of physics using open resources, and so I'll tell you a little bit about what we've been doing lately. So a few years ago, um, with the collaboration of CPI and the audiovisual department, we videotaped uh, Bojdar Mitrovic, uh, my senior colleague. He's been teaching astronomy here for many years. And so we videotaped uh, a series of lectures for our two first year astronomy courses. And, uh, so, and um, CPI then edited these uh, videotapes into little, uh, little pieces. And so we've got these posted on our website. Uh, we use them in the online section of our course. Uh, but again, they're open to the, to the whole world there. Anybody with an internet connection can then view these lectures that are served at our website uh, or on YouTube. So if you search YouTube, then uh, you can see Bojadar's beautiful lectures. Um, so, you know, that was done with the collaboration of CPI, lots of people working there, and uh, in the AV department. And I think that's worth emphasizing that a lot of this work that has been done has been a collaboration with lots and lots of people at Brock. Um, I'm glad that uh, Rajiv uh, mentioned uh, um, Marie Schmidt and Frank Futin and uh, Rick Scheel. Uh, they've created a beautiful online uh, planetary astronomy course. If you haven't seen it yet, it's worth checking out. It's, it's really good. Um, okay, so astronomy. So we use that heavily in our online astronomy course. Um, we also are starting to use uh, OpenStax textbooks. So um, Maureen Redick teaches our second year Physics 2P50 Modern Physics course and is using an OpenStax uh, textbook for that. Uh, we've now converted all of our first year, we have three first year physics courses, 
We use an OpenStax textbook for all three of them. Uh, students like them. Uh, they're good quality textbooks, and uh, students like them for you know, all the reasons that uh, our students mentioned earlier here up at the front. Um, our, our, our bookstore, so our, what we've done essentially with these three courses is slice up the textbook into approximately thirds. So a third of the textbook is used for each of these fir three first-year textbooks, uh, three first-year courses. And every time we run one of these courses, there are always some students who prefer, you know, printed versions. And so our textbook then just prints out the slice of the textbook that's relevant for that course, and then students can buy them for a nominal cost. I think it's about 10 bucks or so, uh, just, to, just to cover the cost of printing. So that's available for students as well, and that's important for some students. So good, so we've got that as well. Um, now, learning physics is a lot more than just reading a textbook, though. You've got to uh, solve problems, many, many, many problems. Uh, so in our upper year courses, we can afford to have students write out solutions to their problems by hand, hand them in, and have them graded by teaching assistants. We can't do that at first year because we just don't have the resources to do that. So in the past, we have been using online um, homework programs that are provided by publishers that students have to pay for. And now we're using WebWork. So uh, WebWork is a free program. Uh, it's open source. Uh, it was developed starting in 1994 by two mathematicians at University of Rochester, Arnold Pizer and Michael Gage. Uh, and they kindly you know, put this out into the world and so any, anyone can use it. It's now used by over 700 universities around the world, mainly in North America, but around the world. Uh, we have our own installation of the software here. So it's maintained locally by uh, Brad Saxton. Among the many things Brad Saxton does from IT is maintain the software. Um, so, um, so we host our own, our own courses here. Uh, the software is integrated with the uh, Brock registration system so that if a student registers in the course, they're automatically in web work. We'd like to see it integrated into Sakai as well so that when students um, log on to Sakai, they're automatically in web work. Hopefully that'll happen at some point. Uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a robust software, so it's, um, it's got a, a powerful mathematical en engine underneath it, so we can ask all kinds of questions, including uh, calculation questions, multiple choice questions, matching, et cetera, et cetera, but also questions where you have to input a formula, and the software is clever enough to distinguish between equivalent formulas that are nevertheless not identical, so it's, it's really good software. Um, so, okay, so we have this software and we've been using it. Um, the math department actually uh, started using it about, around about 10 years ago, and now it's used by math and physics both. Um, because it was developed by mathematicians, there's an enormous database of math questions at you know, lots of different levels, lots of different topics. Uh, over 20,000 questions um, on different math topics. There's almost nothing for physics though. So we've had to develop our own database of physics questions. And so we've been doing that. Um, various people in the physics department have been doing that. So Ed Stern and David Crandall's myself, uh, Brad Van Oosten, uh, Thomas Beniak, Caroline Promnitz, Brandon Lestraco. So we've all, all been working on this, uh, uh, building up a good database of questions while we're using it. And then, of course, once we have established uh, a really good tested um, database of questions that have been tested to make sure they have no programming errors and so forth, we'll then upload them into the WebWork community so that they'll be usable by any you know, first-year physics instructors who'd like to use them. So um, with the help of Julia Forsyth and eCampus Ontario, we landed an eCampus Ontario grant uh, to help us build up this database, but also to uh, develop web work in some ways. So for example, uh, one of the ways we'd like to develop web work is to uh, develop an answer checker. So this is the great thing about open source, right? Is that we can modify things for our own needs. So although there's a robust answer checker, um, uh, many robust answer checkers available in web work, uh, in math, 1.40, 1.400, 1.4000, they're all the same. There's no difference between them. But in science, there is a difference between those numbers, right? 1.4 uh, 
connotes a certain degree of certainty of, of precision of accuracy, but 1.40 connotes a higher degree of accuracy. And because we'd like to teach students the difference between those, we need an answer checker that will distinguish 1.4 from 1.40. So with the help of this grant, you know, we're working on programming that. Uh, we also would like to include dynamic graphics. So what I mean by that is that the questions that we program on WebWork um, are, have randomized coefficients so that if a number of students are doing the same assignment, uh, each student will get randomized you know, numbers uh, in, in the question. But some of these questions have graphics, right? Uh, it might be adding two vectors. So there's a graph of two vectors that you add up. And so it would be nice if the picture for each student was different. So, and that's, it's possible to program that, but it's a non-trivial programming task. So we've got these two major tasks and a number of other programming tasks. And so we're very grateful to the eCampus Ontario grant, which will facilitate the development of the software to further suit our needs. Um, anyway, so that's the kind of thing that we've been doing lately in physics. Any questions? I want to thank Santo particularly for physics because I just paid my student loan this year. I'm 43. And, um, I was just paying off my first year physics textbook. So, and I couldn't understand why, I was like, this looks the same each year. Like they change a skier to a snowboarder, but exactly the same. And so when you adopted it, I was, you know, the sky opened up and it was great. So thank you, Santo. <laughs> I'm gonna hand this back to Lori to, to wrap it up for today. Can, can I just say one oh. thing? I just wanna say one thing uh, about that. I, I, I meant to say this earlier, but I'm sorry that I forgot. Um, I routinely, it's been about a year now that I routinely refuse to see publishers reps in my office anymore. So uh, I get, like everybody else, I get frequent requests. I'll be on campus next Wednesday, can I see you? No, you can't see me. Uh, and I try to be as nice as possible about it, but uh, I refuse to see them. And if they happen to pop by, then I just, again, I try to be as nice as possible. But, you know, I do not see publishers reps in my office by policy.